Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters Shalom alaikum thank you very much for watching this video today and we are speaking about or we are checking out a video reacting to it the philosophical failure of Islam I'm not sure how this video is gonna go but before we get started do me a favor drop a like on the video if you're new to the channel please do subscribe and also as the video is going on please do leave a comment down below let's not waste any more time I really really want to hear what these people are gonna say in this video so let's go and let's get it When someone comes to that the conclusion be that God truly exists, the next question that arises is his nature, or manner of existing. In his work titled, De Ente et Essentia, or in okay, English, that's right, in essence, that's right. St. Thomas Aquinas argues that in a being which is created, there is a difference between what a being is and the fact that the being exists. Here, existence refers to a completion of a thing's potential to correspond to reality, to be real where something is in reality, independent of any mind or conception. A good example is an apple. I could think of what an apple is, but okay. that whatness is different from the fact that the apple actually exists. Ultimately, both essence, or what that thing is, and existence as really distinct, that is really different, have to be combined in order to get a real created thing, a real apple. Thus we they can have perceive, to be combined, being that's okay true. With the fundamental groundwork of St. Thomas, true. that existence and essence are not only really distinct from one another, but are distinct in such a way that in any created being, they are parts of that being, precisely because they are not the whole of the being. What this means is that every created being is made up of parts or attributes, but there must be something to unite okay, these attributes, true. and we ultimately call this being God. But if every being which is made up of parts is dependent on something to unite those parts, God necessarily could not be made up of parts or attributes, but just is himself. And this is the failure of the Islamic conception of God or Allah. Today, Aquino and I, using scholastic metaphysics, will refute the Athari Islamic conception of God and show how their idea of God lacks the true metaphysical nature of God as he would be a dependent being, and is therefore false. A dependent now before we being. show that the Islamic view of God is false, really? we must first demonstrate that God is metaphysically simple, or that divine simplicity is true. Now firstly, what it means for God to be simple, I don't think that that's is not possible. made divine parts, simplicity. properties, or attributes, but just is himself in reality as if he was made up of parts, then he would be a composite being. The first and more manifest way of arguing for this is that as Aquinas states, every composite has a cause, for things in themselves different cannot unite unless something causes them to unite. To deny this truth would mean that there could be a thing that can combine itself. To extend that to the essence and existence distinction, that would mean that there could be a thing that could make its essence and its own existence come together. This would mean that it is causing itself to exist, otherwise known as causes to why. But this is blatantly false on the pain of absurdity or polytheism. And so in general, what Aquinas is arguing is that beings, which are made up of components or parts, require a cause to unite them to be such a way. As a table is put together by a craftsman, so also are all beings ultimately put together by God. But it is evident that God is an uncaused cause as he wouldn't be God if he was caused exactly. to exist. Therefore, God couldn't have or mm, be made of parts cause. as he is uncaused. This is even further evident as Aquinas states that every this composite is posterior to its component parts and is dependent on them. What he means by this is that the parts of every composite being exist before the actual composite being itself. As yet again, the parts of a table exist prior to the table being built. But Aquinas touches upon an even further and bigger issue. If God did not have one attribute or part, such as omnipotence, he would not be God, and therefore God would be dependent on his very he would attribute not be God. to be God. But of course, really? by the term God, it is evident that God is not dependent on anything. So therefore, he would have to be simple and would just be himself. A Muslim might respond that the attributes wouldn't be parts, since we reject the same definition of a part, 
if we understand a part to be something separable from another and not something lesser than the whole. But the universe itself cannot be divided. Yet we are all parts of the material universe. The law of conservation of mass states that nothing in the closed system of the material universe can be created or destroyed, only rearranged. Yet it is impossible for it to be separated from the universe itself. Thus we have an example of a composite thing that has inseparable parts. One might begin to question though how God can have the attribute of omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence, and more, if he is metaphysically simple and without literal attributes and parts. Our answer exactly. to this is when the human mind tries to conceive of God's essence, we conceive it through the created world. And so when we predicate, for example, the attribute of power to God, what we mean is that God has something like power in him in a more perfect way, and therefore we would analogically predicate it of him. But this predication does not exist in God as a real attribute, as distinct from his essence, but we would say that it exists in some manner in God's simple nature, but not in reality. The famous example given is that of a triangular prism, which when it receives one simple light, turns into a variety of colors. The variety of colors being the way we perceive God through creation, and the simple light being God's simple nature. Therefore, we would say that these distinctions which we perceive in God are logical or virtual distinctions which only exist in our mind, but do not exist in reality. Francisco Suarez helps to further explain a virtual distinction, as he states that, this sort of distinction does not formally and actually intervene between the things designated as distinct, as they exist in themselves, but only as they exist in our ideas, from which they receive some denomination. Thus we distinguish one attribute from another in God. As a side note, go to the description below and check out 10books.com and use the discount code SANCTUS15 for 15% discount. Now that we've shown that God is necessarily simple and not composite, let's go over hadith and some sources that prove Islam believes in a composite God. Nah, I don't think we believe that. that shows that the but of God are really let's just see what, what happens. The book reference is in that and this I 5379, which states, The Prophet said, Those who are just and fair will be with Allah, the Most High, on thrones of light, at the right hand of the Most Merciful. Those who are just in their rulings and in their dealings with their families and those of whom they are in charge. Muhammad, one of the narrators, said in this hadith, And both of his hands are right hands. Islamic philosophers would then conclude with the statement of the attributes and the essence of God. God has hands, God isn't hands, therefore God does not equal hands. With this statement, it is evident that the hands are not the whole or entirety of Allah. Necessarily then, they would be merely a part of Him. This distinction between the essence and attributes is also evident amongst Islamic scholars such as Ibn Taymiyyah and the scholars he quotes from. And he states, quote, Some may say the attribute is neither identical to the subject nor entirely different from it. This has a correct meaning, which is that the attribute is not identical to the essence of the subject as conceived by the mind in isolation, but it is also not something entirely separate from the subject. Rather, the subject with the attributes is a single, indivisible entity. He then states further that, quote, For this reason, the Sheikh al targhi may Allah have mercy on him, said, He has always existed with his attributes, and did not say he has always existed and his attributes, because conjunction, using and, implies separation. And likewise, Imam Ahmed, may Allah have mercy on him, okay, said, yeah, that's in true. debate with Jamea, we do not say Allah and his knowledge, Allah and his power, Allah and his light. Rather, we say Allah with his knowledge, power, and light, he is one God, glorified and exalted. So with what the text just states, the attributes of Allah aren't separate from his essence nor are they identical to him. Therefore, according to Ibn Taymiyyah and the scholars he quotes, the attributes would have to be really distinct from Allah's essence. To sum up, the attributes are really distinct from Allah's essence. This is the case as if Allah's omnipotence is not the whole of him, it necessarily would have to be a part, as there's no in between. Therefore, he would be a composite being, which is made up of attributes or parts. Furthermore, if Allah lacked even one attribute, he wouldn't be complete. For example, if he lacked the attribute of power, he wouldn't be God since by the term God, we imply an all-powerful being. So in sum, Allah then would depend on each of his attributes which we already demonstrated to be impossible due to God's nature 
being simple and not dependent. Thank you for watching. Okay, so the thing that's weird about this video is the fact that there's two separate um, distinctions here. One is the distinction of saying God is, you know, simple. And him being simple is that um, he actually is observed in nature. He actually is, you know, he, he can be determined, if I can put it like that. And the other perspective is that he has a character and his character is made up of different um, characteristics or parts if I can put it in that way and that's the, the take of Muslims right a line is power a line is light um, a line is mercy no Allah with his mercy not and because and is something separate with his mercy and and with his grace and all of these things are so the idea here is that when we characterize God as these different characteristics we make him finite and when we make him finite it means that he cannot be omnipotent omniscient or omnipresent it takes away that power that we have attributed to God for the longest of time because now if he has certain characters that we can name right let me make an example if is God and his light or Allah with his light not and with his light right you must understand we only see a certain percentage or a certain um, scale of light and its spectrum in the spectrum of light we only see a certain um, um, our eyes only see a certain perspective of even nature of everything we only see a certain perspective we don't see light in like a hundred percent we really don't have a clear vision or a full vision of things so when we say that Allah with his light then we it's like we are making it all about our natural capabilities we are we are limiting him and if we limit him in in the characteristics that we give him then we put him or bring him to a natural human being state then if we are Muslims and we believe that God has all of these characters and characteristics then we are no different to people who believe that God is Jesus Christ because even the people believe that God is Jesus Christ they have accepted the fact that they are limiting the power of God he can be limited to a human being he can be limited to a physical um, manifestation of a human being we wouldn't be any different from the Christians if we are Muslims and we believe in the, the, the let's say that the names of Allah and we make the names of Allah the character of Allah in his entirety then we are going to miss the plot wholeheartedly because even the names of Allah that we call him all of those names even though they were revealed unto humanity but they are a human explanation or a human interpretation of Allah if the revelation came to a cat or a, or a, or a horse or another animal I'm sure it would have came in another kind of perspective for an example the, the explanation of cherubims the explanation of certain angels in heaven how they look just merely on how they look we can only but wonder how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks. We can only merely but wonder how God looks. If cherubims can look like that, right? If archangels can look like that, we can only wonder. Therefore, if we can only wonder, we cannot then put limits or put characteristics upon something we ourselves cannot even try to explain. I'm not sure what's your take on this, but hit me up in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you've not done so. And if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. Much love. Peace.